what's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about how you can add asset collections from other assets into GeoScatter. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So we've talked about GeoScatter a bunch on the channel before. It's a really powerful Blender add-on for scattering objects on a space, making it a great tool for adding things like uh, plants and grass and trees and other things like that. Now, one of the powerful things about GeoScatter that I want to make sure you understood how to do is you're not limited to just the biomes that are built into GeoScatter, you can actually bring in multiple different plant libraries from external sources. And so GeoScatter is a massively powerful tool for scattering assets. And one of the things that makes it powerful is um, it has a biome system that actually allows it to bring in external assets um, from other asset collections and scatter them in a preset way. And so you can see how there's a ton of different, uh, there's a ton of different add-ons that support this so like uh, bee productions add-ons with cloudscapes and tree and vegetation um, max tree has assets that work with this bag of pies assets are going to work inside of this tool as well as some others which i don't see trash kit on here but trash kit is one of my favorite add-on oh there it is it's one of my favorite add-ons for just like scattering trash and garbage but all of these have their own asset packs but maybe not as powerful of a scattering tool and so that's why this is so powerful so I'm going to show you how to set those up inside a blender. Okay, and so the first thing to understand is when you install these scatter packs, they're going to be this certain kind of file. It's a scat pack file. So it's a dot scat pack. So that dot scat pack file is something that'll come as a download along with the actual assets that are uh, inside of whatever you've purchased, right? So like this is trash kit. Trash kit comes with a blend file. That's basically the asset folder and then a scatter pack, which is what you would install in scatter in order to tell it how to scatter these assets. And so what you need to do is you need to install the scatter pack file into GeoScatter, but then you also need to bring your trash kit into the asset library. I'm not gonna to talk too much about the asset library right now. Um, so it's pretty easy to do. You just go into your preferences and inside of your file paths, you just add that folder as an asset library. Um, specifically though, I wanna jump over into GeoScatter for a second. So we're gonna go into the add-ons tab under GeoScatter. We're gonna click on enter manager and notice how you have options in here for install a package and find biomes online. Well, in this case, we wanna click on the button for install a package. And so what you wanna do is you wanna go navigate into the folder that contains that scatter pack file and you just wanna double click on it in order to install it. Now, when you do that, what that's going to do is that's going to take that scatter pack and bring all of the biomes that are inside of that scatter pack file into um, Blender. So notice how right here, this now has all of those different kinds of biomes in here. And these are just collections of biomes that have been created by the asset creator. And usually they're gonna be a lot more realistic than what you would just come up with, which is why we use them. Um, but what we would do is we would just use the biome scatter function inside of Geo, Geo Scatter in order to scatter them. And so if we go back to our preferences for a second, notice how there's an option in here for search for blended asset library paths. And so what that means is that means that when we scatter this, so when we run a biome, it's going to go find those blend files inside of these folders. So notice how, because I've added trash kit to my asset library like this, when I scatter this, it's going to work because it's gonna be able to search that folder and find all of the assets that we would scatter on this surface. So um, the way that this whole thing would work then um, from start to finish is say that you had a plane like this one. And I'm gonna scale it down a little bit because we don't need that much trash in our scene. Um, but we're gonna apply our rotation and scale. Well, what we would do in GeoScatter is we would select this surface as an emitter. And then we would scroll down to Biome Scatter and click on the option for Open Biomes. And in this case, notice how we can select the options under Trash Kit right here. And we can pick the different scatter types. So let's say we wanted this one with tons of tires in it. We just click on the plus button right here. It's going to import that and scatter all of those assets on this surface using the assets inside of your asset library. 
like this. So notice how it goes in here and it does all of the scattering for you. You don't have to come in here and add individual items or anything like that. And then notice how those systems all show up inside of GeoScatter over here. So if you wanted to adjust them, so say you wanted to run up your instances of your tires. Notice how I can use this in order to do that, in order to add additional tires in here. But notice how these are live inside of GeoScatter so you can actually adjust them and make changes to them if you want to. So that's how you can import that scatter pack file. Now I do wanna point out, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove all of these. We don't really need them um, in the scene because we're gonna do something else. Now some assets, and I'm going to use tree and vegetation as an example, they come in and they nest their assets in a lot of folders. And so if we go and look at the data that comes in with this, notice how we have to go in a data folder, then a vegetation, then the individual assets are all in their own folders over here. Well, the problem with this is this just gets into a lot of nested folders and GeoScatter doesn't always pick them up, right? So if I go into my preferences and we're gonna install the scatter pack, from tree and vegetation, like this. So that's going to add that to my biomes. But if I go into my biomes under tree vegetation and I try to add that or scatter it on the surface, notice how it's gonna give me an error saying it didn't find this in my scatter library. So the reason that this is the case is because there's so many folders in here. This only searches the top couple folders for assets. So the way to fix that is we can go into our preferences and notice how there's an option for search for dot blend in our given paths. What we can do is we can add a custom path. So in this case, right, I would click into this level right here and click on accept. So notice how this has a lot of folders and it only searches in the first two levels of folders. Um, so you might need to do a little bit of reorganization in there, but now I've gotten it into this folder. Now, if I go into my biomes and I run this, so we'll just run the coniferous right here. Notice how now it can find those assets and actually like um, scatter them on my surface like this. So if you ever get to the point where you install a scatter pack and it's not bringing in the assets, you may need to just give it a more detailed path in here under the search for blend and given paths. So the powerful thing about this is because you can bring in assets from other tools into scatter, um, it means that you can just keep adding to your library and use those with the powerful scattering functions inside of this tool. I will link to scatter in the notes down below. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool and about the ability to bring in the assets. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.